Okay, sorry the video cut off again. We had just derived that B can be found from the critical temperature and critical pressure of a gas, which we can measure directly in the lab with the uh, device that I will, will show you, uh, or the lab instructor will show you. Okay? Now all that's left is to take B and substitute it back into our equation for A. So A equals 27 critical pressure times this RTC over 8 PC, whole thing squared. And so this simplifies to, uh, it doesn't look very simplified, but 27 times the critical temperature squared times R squared divided by 64 and the critical pressure. Just one unit of that since you get one cancellation of the critical pressure. And so again, what we're getting here at the end is A defined in terms of two measurable properties of our gas, critical temperature and critical pressure. All right. So it, it took a little while to get through this derivation and to understand, but we now are able to, for any gas, if we can measure accurately its critical temperature and pressure, we can understand how significant its behavior deviates from ideal behavior at extreme conditions. Right? Now this uh, relates to some other stuff that you'll have in your homework um, and in lab, uh, not some, well, in, in homework more, um, you can use because there's a table in your book of A and B values actually just given to you, um, you can use them to calculate what is the real pressure of a gas, what is the real volume of a gas, and see how significant it deviates from the ideal pressure that's predicted at a certain temperature or certain, uh, certain pressure. All right? uh, and that's part of the lab exercise that we will uh, do today as well. So if Lindsay, if you wanted to bring up the uh, projector over here, uh, I'll actually walk you through real quick. This is getting us a little bit ahead, but in the interest of having it all condensed, um, the on button. We are very shortly going to measure the critical temperature and pressure of sulfur hexafluoride. That will take us all of um, five minutes to do. All right, so the lab experiment's very short if it even takes that long. What, what we're more interested though is in using the critical temperature and pressure to, um, to uh, do some other calculations. All right, I have to get typed in here. I'm typing at an angle, I can't type. All right, so in your data analysis template for this experiment, after we've done the, the basic stuff of calculating our A and B value for sulfur hexafluoride, I have some extension exercises thrown in there to, to make you actually do something for, for, the, for the lab, okay? Um, what you're going to have to do uh, is for sulfur hexafluoride, okay, we're going to complete this table that, that we have. And this is in your data analysis, but I've made it real quickly in Excel. So for a given list of pressures, and assuming these are the ideal pressures, one atmosphere, and then jumping up to big pressures, 100, 200. So these are enormous pressures. This is when we're gonna to start to see deviations uh, of a real gas, you know, or a gas from its ideal behavior, okay? First thing I want you to do is, for a single mole, to calculate the volume of that gas. So, you know, we know, ideally, PV equals NRT, right? So the ideal volume is NRT divided by P. You're going to use one mole, all right? And you're using 273 Kelvin. So this becomes a matter of in this cell up here, typing the equation equals, you don't need to worry about the one for N, 
but you would type in your ideal gas constant, 08206, atmosphere liters per mole Kelvin, times the temperature, 273, and then divided by the pressure, so that is A2. You, just, you could just type in A2, or you could calculate A2. Right? Now you can see I've got you doing enough calculations. You're, you're going to want to do this in the spreadsheet and not, not by hand, uh, because it's just going to be a lot of buttons to push. So then when you hit enter, you can then, uh, oh, let me see your, um, it wants a time symbol between the two numbers that you put there, Lindsay. Okay. Got it? Okay. And this is, uh, that makes sense. This is that we know that one mole of gas at uh, standard temperature uh, has a volume of 22.4 liters. So now Lindsay can just grab the little corner of this uh, and fill it down, and bang, we have all of our volumes predicted. Okay? Real quickly, does this match what we think about for gases? As the pressure increased, Look at what happened to the gas volume. It is decreasing, if you can see that. Okay. Now, in the next column over here, you are directed to take the ratio of pressure times volume divided by R and T. So this would be equals A2, your pressure, times B2, volume, divided by, all right, 0 0.08206, you can put this in parentheses, I guess, times 273. Now, what's this really? That should really just be N, how many moles of gas you have. So this whole column should equal 1. It won't be much interest, but this is setting the stage for something we do later on. Okay. There we go. And then go ahead and fill that column down as well. Okay, one, 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 one. Not very exciting, right? Okay. Now, that's the ideal behavior. So now we're going to shift over to real behavior. So the real pressure from the Van der Waals equation that we have in our report is nRT over V minus A N over V squared. So we need to figure out how to type this equation in to Excel. All right, uh, and um, what we're going to do here is uh, we can assume, by the way, ideal behavior for the volume when we're doing, when we're doing this. Okay. So again, this equation would be equals, the N is still one mole, that's fine, 0 0.08206 times our temperature, 273. That probably needs to be in parentheses. Divided by B2 minus then, all right, we need our A value for sulfur hexafluoride. Okay, so uh, I can look it up here real quickly. Actually, I can't look it up. It's not in the textbook that I'm looking at right, right there. Okay, um, so let me get an average, let me pick one from a different gas. It is in your textbook. It's not in this different textbook that I'm looking at here. 2.25 is listed for one other gas, but this is not actually SF6. Sorry. But that's what you'll do. You'll put the A value that you have right there. And then you would multiply this by parentheses 1 divided by the ideal volume was over in B2 again, and parentheses carrot 2. That's how you do squared in an Excel. Okay, and that should give you the real pressure. Now, it's been a while, I've put a lot in your brain, but remember that the real pressure of a gas, we said, is always less than 
the ideal pressure because of the stickiness of the particles. So as we fill this column down now, we want to compare it to what we had over here. All right, oh, that's way, way less. Holy cow. So let me see if we've got it right. You wanted the critical pressure for SF6? What was that, James? Sorry? You wanted the critical pressure for sulfur x No, I wanted the, um, the Van der Waals constant for A is what I was after there. Okay. That's all. all right. um, well, this might be okay, actually. What this tells us is that we're above the critical pressure, actually, and I think that's why this goes negative. Can you get back on your formula here? What is it? This is okay. That we don't need another. Uh, that's a. That's okay. I, I, I think this formula is okay. Uh, and I'm, uh, if I'm remembering from doing this in years past, where this value turns negative is going to change from one gas to another because of the number that you put in down here. Okay, so don't be alarmed by this for right now. Okay, now let's repeat this. Let's find the real volume. Our real volume had the nRT over pressure plus n times b. So our equation here in E would be to type in equals, again we don't need the 1 for the mole, but 0 0.08206 times 273 divided by the ideal pressure we can use, pressure ideal, so divided by A2, all right, plus then, again we don't need the moles, but just plus the B value. So let me look up a average B value. These are much smaller, like 0 0.0426 is an example of one that might be close to what we'll find for sulfur hexafluoride, but it's again not SF6. So that should be our equation. And what did we say? Our volume should be slightly increased for the real gas because the particles themselves have real volume. The deviation will be less significant at low pressures and more significant at high pressures. So as we fill this down, we're going to start to see a huge difference in the volume, I would bet. Yeah, all right. Uh, oh, wait a minute. Oh, okay, sorry. I was looking at the pressures. <laughs> we want to compare these two columns right here. And we do see that in each case, this volume is larger than the ideal volume. Okay. So the last thing we want to do in this spreadsheet is the same thing that we did in column C, but now for the real values. We want to take equals real pressure times real volume divided by 0 0.08206 and 273. So that's going to be D2 times E2 divided by parentheses 0 0.08206 times 273. Okay. Again, this will probably be close to 1 at the lowest pressure that we have, closest to ideal behavior. But now here's where we're going to see in this ratio significant deviation from the moles of gas, all right, that, that we have, okay? So you'll want to repeat this analysis uh, that we've done here uh, in Excel. And then to visualize this all, a picture is worth a thousand words or a thousand calculations in some cases, all right? We're going to make a graph, a plot. And so we're going to plot the two values that we have. So we actually have to make two graphs. But then you're going to make a graph, and this is similar to what's in your textbook, of PV over RT versus pressures. So versus the real or the ideal pressures that you have over in that first column there. All right. And um, so the way you could do that would be to highlight the real pressures, click control, 
and then highlight C, column C, P down to there. All right. Go to insert a scatter graph. First choice. All right. And here is our graph. Now let me clear up the board so we can see this. Now this one doesn't change because these are all ones. Okay. Click on one of these data points, right click on the mouse, and go to uh, select data. All right. And we want to add a series of data. Okay. The X values, click this button for the X values. All right. And we can click the same ones that we had before. Oh, drag it down. Okay. And now dump it in with the arrow here. Okay. Now the Y values we're going to want, click the button, are the real pressure volumes in column F now. So clicking F, dragging down to about 10. It looks like you got it. There you go. Dump it back in. All right. All right. And then, okay. Okay. We don't need to name it. All right. Something didn't go right. Ah. It made the graph incorrect. No. It, it did it. They can put them vice versa. They're, they're vice versa in the First case, actually, aren't they? No, pressures. It, okay, click on the red, right click on the red, okay, uh, go to the data, okay. This is series two, all right, uh, edit it, okay. Our X values are supposed to be the pressures, all right. So, A's are okay, and our Y values are supposed to be the, that. Should have these values here. I don't understand why it's not doing it. Okay, hit okay there for me. Let's see what it has for this one here. Edit. All right. X values, Y values. That's really strange. C and F, those are the analogous columns versus A. This should, these values should come out. Okay, hit, hit OK there. Oh, wait, let me see this right here. Again, series two, edit. Change that one to a two right in here. Just type it right in there. Oh. No, you don't want the one. I think you just want the, just want the numbers. There you go. It's gonna be all messed up. Okay, hit, hit okay. Right. Well, now, now hit the red button to go out. Hit the red button here to go out. And then just click again. Repeat your, yeah, hit the lead, I guess. And then drag from two down to 10. Okay. And then do it here again. Now, you gotta do one, two down to ten here. There we go. All right, now we can see it's fixed, okay? Yay. All right, so this graph shows the deviation. It sort of visualizes this deviation for you that as the pressure increases, and of course you would clean this up, maybe add some labels, change these labels here, okay? Uh, but you see that as the pressure increases, you start to get a larger and larger difference between ideal behavior, which is this nice steady line here, and real gas behavior. All right. Uh, so that's one of the take home messages of this experiment. So you do that for sulfur hexafluoride with the 
uh, gas that we're working with in lab, and then you repeat with a gas that you pick from your textbook. There's a table in your textbook in chapter uh, 5 that lists the A and B parameters. Now, it gets so easy to do it for the other one. All you want to do, and we'll do this for him real quick, Lindsay, let's copy and paste this whole set of data right here. So, or copy it. Now go down to a new sheet. Paste it. Paste, yeah, paste it, okay. And it should have brought all of our formulas over with us. So all we, the, the real stuff would be completely the same. All we have to do is go for our, our different real gas. All you have to do is go to that formula. This was your A value. You just need to change it and then fill down the formula, all right? And then change in the B value and fill down the formula. And everything will be updated. So it's not a ton of work to do this for all.